हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू माय क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ जोग्राफी दैट इज इंडिया साइज एंड लोकेशन नाउ मूव टूवर्ड्स द टॉपिक दिस इज आर टॉपिक इंडिया एंड द वर्ल्ड सो लेट अस बिगिन The Indian landmass has a central location between the East and the West Asia. India is a southward extension of the Asian continent. The Trans-Indian Ocean routes which connect the countries of Europe in the West and the countries of East Asia provide a strategic central location to India. Basically in this topic we will learn India's location in Asia and its advantages. to understand this topic we should move towards the world map here it is this is the world map here you can see the area in purple color is asia continent in the same india is denoted in yellow color which is situated in the southern part of asia at the head of the indian ocean Let, Let me show see. you. See this. The this entire part is the part of Asia continent in which India is also. So according to this figure, we can clearly say that India is situated in the southern part of Asia, as well as it has central location. Now. this is one this is an important statement we are going to find out how this is important so once again i would take you towards the paragraph see here what is written a strategic central location to india after that what is written here note that the deccan peninsula protrudes into the indian ocean thus helping India to establish close contact with West Asia, Africa and Europe from the western coast and with South East and South and East Asia from the east coast. What is what is the meaning of this these lines? Once again I would take you towards the world map. See here. Actually it is written that india's location is in asia is very strategic why is it said so the reason behind is all the ships that come from europe when they have to travel east asia they have to pass through indian ocean and it helps us in developing close contact with west asia africa and europe from the west coast i would like to show you as you know this is india okay and this is the western part of india i am sorry this is the western coast of india and this is the eastern coast as you know that all the ships that come from europe that come either from this side or from this side also so they all have to pass through indian ocean this is very important for india as india also connected with all these countries now here i would show you that how this location i mean india's location in asia continent is very strategic as i mentioned this is the western coast so from the western coast india can easily reach to the west asian countries these are these are west asian countries these are the east african countries and europe so from western coast the ship goes to all these countries of the world so that is the reason we say that india is benefited by this kind of location in the same manner india is well connected with east asia and south east asian countries first i would like to show you which are the countries that is called east asian countries so here 
in which Japan, Korea, okay, come. Thereafter, Southeast Asian countries. So, these are Southeast Asian countries. Then how we are connected with these countries? Definitely from the Eastern coast. This is the Eastern coast. So, the Indian ship goes to these countries, okay, by these routes. So, in this way, India is well connected by all the countries of the world through Indian sea routes. So, I think it is clear now and because of these reason, the Indian Ocean got its name. As you know that uh, India is, India is just above the Indian Ocean, okay. And that is why this ocean got its name Indian Ocean. So, now we should move to the topic once again. See here. One more line is written here. No other country has a long coastline on the Indian Ocean as India has and indeed. It is India's eminent position in the Indian Ocean which justifies the naming of an ocean after it. See, this is an important line. What is this one? <clears throat> no other country has a long coastline on the Indian Ocean. <clears throat> it means we are talking about that India has the longest coastline in context of Indian Ocean. It does not mean that India has the longest coastline in the world or Asia continent. If you have been asked which country has the longest coastline in Asia, then your answer will be Indonesia. And if it is in the context of world, then it will be Canada. But if we are talking about which country has the longest coastline in Indian Ocean, then our answer will be India. So now this paragraph is clear. We should move to the next paragraph. This is what is written here. India's contacts with the world have continued through ages, but her relationships through the land routes are much older than her maritime contacts. What is the meaning? Actually, the meaning is very simple. It is only written that India's contact with outside world have continued through the ages, but her relationship through the land routes are much older than her maritime. Maritime means oceanic. It means that first, the Indian started to contact with the world from the land routes, not sea route. The reason behind was the ocean was very scary because of high tide and violent storm and the ancient people dare not to go into the ocean. That is why the traveler used land routes. Now see the next, the various passes across the mountains in the north have provided passages to the ancient travelers while the ocean restricted such interaction for a long time. It means that as you know that southern part of India, once again you can see here also, this is the sorry northern part of India having the Himalaya which is very mighty. It is a uh, you can say mighty wall of Himalaya which had restricted interaction of India okay, with other countries. Then how it is possible? Let us see. Basically the Himalaya which lies in the north, northern part of India stood as a mighty barrier between India and the rest of the world. Then the question is, then the question is how did the interaction, sorry, how did the interaction become possible? Actually there are various passes or gaps across the Himalayas like Zozila in Jammu and Kashmir, Shipkila in Himachal Pradesh 
and Nathula in Sikkim, which helped the travelers to visit India. See here, this is Jammu and Kashmir, here Himachal Pradesh, and here Sikkim. So, and it is Himalaya. So, people got the route in Himalaya through the gaps or passes and because of that they came to India. We have the evidence like uh, Chinese pilgrims, Fahian and other traders came to our country through these routes. So now this paragraph is clear. See what is the next? These routes have contributed in the exchange of ideas and commodities since ancient times. The ideas of Upanishads and the Ramayana, the stories of Panchatantra, the Indian numerals and the decimal system that, that thus could reach many parts of the world. What is this? Actually here it is written that uh, our relation with other countries is very old and it is just like uh, when we visit to our friends and relatives house what do we do we generally exchange our ideas opinion and views and sometimes we present gifts also in the same manner in ancient time also people did the same like uh, from india the ideas of upanishad ramayana the story of Panch Tantra and numerals and so many things went to other parts of the country from India. It was not only you can say ideas but commodities also. So which are the which were the commodities? So here you can see spices, mus muslin and other merchandise. Spices you know is, uh, these are the ingredients which we generally use in uh, making foods now and muslin is a type of very fine and thin cotton and other merchandise means uh, you may say that uh, trading items which the traders used so all these things reached to the other part of the world from india now what is the next we find that on the other hand the influence of Greek sculpture and the architecture style of dome and minarets from West Asia can be seen in different parts of our country. It means the art of making figures or objects from stones we have learned from Greece while a number of historical monuments which have a structure like domes and minarets that we learned from West Asian countries. So this was all about the topic. So the last topic that is India's neighbors we will discuss in the in next class. Till then goodbye.